<laughs> hey, welcome to episode 3 of Let's Play the Dungeon of Dread. When last we left off, Carrick and LaRousse had decided to head down the dark and dangerous looking corridor. Come on, let's head down there. As you enter the corridor, you hear the sound of grinding stone and see some dust fall from the ceiling. Something's wrong, you whisper to the halfling. Let's get out of here. You turn around and start retracing your footsteps. However, before you have gone two paces, a tremendous roar knocks you off your feet, and the passage before you collapses. When the dust settles, you see the corridor is completely blocked with large boulders, heavy timbers, and dirt. <coughs> it's impossible, you say. We'll never dig out without tools. We can only go forward. Reluctantly, the two of you stagger to your feet, turn around, and walk down the corridor, alert for danger at every step. The corridor ends in a room. A feeling of menace hangs heavy in the air. But what you see seems harmless enough. The room is approximately 20 feet square and dimly lit. The ceiling and walls are rough with stalactites hanging from the ceiling. The floor is smooth. A stone well about three feet tall stands in the middle of the room. The well is covered with mysterious carvings of ugly faces. Sword in hand, you approach the well carefully. Don't do that! Get away! screams the halfling. You stare at the halfling in shock. There's something horrible in there, LaRue says, trembling. But I can't remember it clearly. Calamon picked me up by my feet and dangled me over the pool. He thought it was funny. I didn't think it was so funny. What kind of monster is it? you ask. I don't know, he answers. I never saw anything like it before. Sneaking up carefully to the well, you glance in quickly and discover it contains only a pool of shallow water. All of your instincts scream danger. Everything in you says leave now, but you do not. You can't go back the way you came and you've come too far to let mysterious carvings around a pool of water frighten you. You look in again and see that the water is crystal clear. You see a bright gold key on the bottom of the pool. The tip of the key is fashioned like a cross with diamonds on each end. Colored gems decorate each corner. The key must be valuable and open the lock to something of great importance. Look, LaRousse, look, you call, but the halfling buries his head in his hands and does not respond. If the key is important, why would it be left lying around in a pool of harmless water? Perhaps the water is not harmless. You could reach in and see what happens. But if a monster does lurk in there, as LaRousse believes, that would not be a good idea. Looking about the room, you see several things you did not notice at first glance. There are two doorways, one on your left and one on your right. Both are dark. You cannot see beyond them. Bones lie scattered on the floor. LaRousse, bring me one of the big bones. The halfling slowly drags a three foot long bone to you. Picking the bone up, you probe the bottom of the pool gingerly, trying to snag the key. Suddenly, the bone is wrenched from your hand with great violence. The water erupts from the pool. A watery, cobra-like head rises out of the pool. It surges at you with its mouth open. You jump back quickly. Once you are out of its striking range, the watery creature sinks back into the pool. See? See? I told you! But no, you wouldn't believe me! cries the halfling. We've got to get out of here before it eats us. Calm down, you say. It can't get us as long as we stay here. It's a water weird, a snake made out of water. It can't leave the pool. I've heard of them mentioned in old tales, but I never thought they were real. It looks real enough to me, says the halfling, teeth chattering. You are silent as you try to remember all you have heard of water weirds. You know they will attack any living thing. It drags any creature it strikes into the pool to drown it. Weapons rarely hurt the monster. 
If you decide you do not wish to fight this dreadful monster, you may choose to leave the key, the monster, and the room. If you decide to leave, you may leave by the doorway on your left. You notice a cool breeze blowing from this doorway. If you choose this route, turn to page 86. Or you may leave by the doorway on the right. If you choose this way, turn to page 73. If you decide to stay and try to get the mysterious key, turn to page 77. Why would Calamon be hiding a key in a pool of water protected by a water weird? And it doesn't look like any normal key. This looks like a pretty important piece of the puzzle of this dungeon. I think we better try to get that before we continue our adventure. So we're going to turn to page 77 and try to get this key. You lean against the far wall and try to figure out what to do next. Should we try to leave? Asks the halfling. Calm down, LaRousse. Let's think for a minute. This key is of great value, otherwise it wouldn't be so well protected. There must be some way of retrieving it. It might be possible to distract the creature. You creep up to the pool, carrying a large rock and a rib bone with you. Peering over the edge, you see the key lying in the calm pool. The halfling covers his eyes. Oh, I can't look, he says. Tell me what happens. You heave the rock into the opposite side of the pool, and the water weird lashes out, flailing the water into a furious froth. You quickly plunge the curved bone into the water and drag it across the bottom of the pool, trying to catch the key. As you drag the bone across the pool, you feel a powerful jerk and the water weird pulls it from your grasp. The water weird sways above the surface of the pool, hissing. Finally, it submerges. The halfling peers through the slits of his fingers. Are you still alive? He asks. Of course I am, you snap. You are shaken, but unhurt. You are puzzled because the bone touched nothing in the pool. How can you see a key that isn't there? If the key is not there, where is it? You search the rough ceiling and see a glimmer. Moving to the far corner of the room, you see a gleam of gold and a flash of green, but you can't be sure that what you see is the key. Moving to the middle of the room, you can at least see that the mysterious key is attached to the ceiling by two thin wires. I know where it is, you say, but how do I get it? And this totally reminds me of Kung Fu Panda. Uh, if you remember, they had the scroll hidden above the pool. And so when you looked in the pool, it looked like the scroll was down there. So I wonder if they got that from this, because uh, Dungeon of Dread obviously is much older than Kung Fu Panda. Anyway, just a little bit of fun there. All right, back to our story. An idea formed in your mind. Perhaps you can use your sword to pry the key from the ceiling, but you must catch it before it falls into the pool or it will be lost forever. LaRousse, come here, you say. I need your help. The halfling steps forward, trembling, but ready. Get ready to catch the key, you say. You take off your cloak and hold it in your left hand. You hold your sword in the other. With a swift movement, you flip your cape over the surface of the well and sweep your sword upwards. Snap! You pry the key from the ceiling. It falls and lands on the cloak. Quickly, you flick your sword forward and, catching the broad surface of the key, flip it away from the pool. It tumbles through the air and the roost leaps forward to catch it. He opens his hands and there you see the key. The water weird hisses in frustration and snaps at your cloak. You jerk your cloak from the water weird's grasp and step back. The Roos proudly hands the key to you and you study its incredible beauty. It lies heavy in your hand, sparkling with gold and jewels. You study the key for several minutes longer, then slip it into your pouch and tighten the strings. Glancing at the well one last time, you turn to continue your adventure. A cool breeze blows down the corridor on the left and you can see that this corridor runs uphill. You cannot see or hear anything in the right-hand corridor. If you choose to enter the left-hand corridor, turn to page 86. If you choose the corridor on the right, turn to page 73. I think it's about time we use one of our lifelines. Um, so we can ask for some help on this one. Let's check with the magic spam and see what we can do. Okay, magic spam. Should we take the corridor on the left or the corridor on the right? The pool with the water weird? 
Okay, we're gonna take the corridor on the right. As you leave the water weird and walk down this corridor, you hear a dull booming noise. What's that noise, Carrick? Asked the halfling, clinging to your arm. I don't know, you answer. As you advance, a sandy corridor opens to your left. You would like to follow this corridor and avoid the booming noise, but your curiosity draws you down the corridor. Moving slowly and cautiously, you ease your way to the edge of a cave where the noise seems to come from. Near the entrance, an enormous wooden beam rises to the ceiling. Another beam lies across the top of the first, supporting the entire weight of the cavern's ceiling. You peer around the beam and into the room. An 11 foot tall hill giant squats on a boulder holding an enormous rock in his huge hands. It is pounding the rock to pieces and often stops to pick small gleaming objects out of the gravel, carefully placing them in a dirty leather pouch at his feet. Please, Garrick, says Larousse. I think I'd like to leave the giant alone. You agree, you certainly do not want this horrible creature after you. Fighting it would be foolish, but you might be able to ambush it. If you try to ambush the hill giant, turn to page 95. If you wish to retreat and try the sandy passageway, turn to page 75. Well, I gotta try. We gotta try for this hill giant. I think if we ambush it, we might be able to get away with it. And if he chases us, I don't think he's gonna be able to follow us back the way we came into the room with the pool. And then we can head back down the other corridor. So let's try to ambush the hill giant. Now let's turn to page 95. You decide that if you are both careful and lucky, you might be able to kill the hill giant. An idea comes to you and you quickly tell LaRousse your plan. You and the halfling begin to dig and scrape the earth from beneath the support beam with your swords. It is slow work for the ground is hard and rocky, but you do not give up. At last, you make some progress. The beam moves and the rock ceiling groans. You push the beam with all your might and the ceiling begins to collapse. You and LaRue step back into the shelter of the corridor and watch the ceiling crash into the room upon the giant. The hill giant doesn't stand a chance. The debris buries it. When the dust settles, you see that a path is clear over the rubble into the room and into the corridor beyond. As you pass over the pile of rubble, LaRue reaches down and pulls a sack from beneath a rock. He opens it and you see six large rubies inside. Jiminy, he says. My wife will like one of those. He hands you three of the rubies and you put them in your pouch. Carefully picking your way through the debris, you and the halfling gladly leave the hill giant behind you and hurry on your way. The path is straight and appears free from danger. Soon the corridor ends and two new passages open, one on your left and one on your right. You hear nothing from either corridor. If you choose to go left, turn to page 94. If you choose to go right, turn to page 102. Well, we really don't have much information to go off of here. We could probably just flip a coin or use one of our lifelines. And we could phone a friend. I've got the opportunity to contact Dumbledore here through the Triwizard Cup. Or we could get in touch with Gandalf through the plant here. And I'm thinking Gandalf might be the better choice because this reminds me of Gandalf in the Mines of Moria. If you remember, he came to a crossroads and he couldn't quite remember which way to go. And he sat and thought about it for a while and then decided on one of the corridors. I think it was even the left-hand corridor. Um, so let's, let's give Gandalf a call, okay? Gandalf. Gandalf.